Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. My name is Insaf Ayana Isaacs, the daughter of Shaheen Isaacs from the Cape Flats in the Dilauma region. I am very thankful for that introduction, Brother Hassan. I'm very grateful for the opportunity to engage everyone here this evening. And a warm welcome, warm kile kile, to everyone tuned in online. Al Quds Day was, as rightfully said by Brother Hassan, was initiated by the Public Republic State of Iran in 1979 to support the people of Palestine. And when I think of the people of Palestine, in the youth, or the youth in particular, I think of a very tragic day in the South African history. And that's June 16, 1976, when in Soweto, a series of demonstrations and protests led by students of color that led to a recorded 176 deaths, estimated at about 700, and injured more than 4,000 young people, decried the oppressive apartheid regime. And in this year, sanctions against South Africa deadlocked, forcing the hand of the United Nations to launch an international campaign. Ultimately, apartheid ended in South Africa through a series of negotiations between 1990 and 1993, through unilateral steps by the declared government, as unpopular as that government may have been. I raise this for a few reasons. The response to oppression against the apartheid regime was unapologetic resistance by South Africans white South Africans, so-called black South Africans, so-called Indian South Africans, so-called colored South Africans, and others. There were endless clashes with the oppressor, much like in Palestine. Rubber bullets, live ammunition, torture, rape, intimidation, unjustified incarceration, forceful removals of people living in peace through the Group Areas Act is what we remember as the remnants of the apartheid regime. I remember stories from my father, Shaheen Isaacs, explaining to me how the apartheid regime's bullies would arrive in the dead of the night to insist that you leave a home that you earned with halal money. And as children, him being one of them, would carry out the modest furniture of neighbors' homes, they'd be brutally beaten without favor and without apology. And to this day, we still struggle to own the identity of Boerka that were established through inhabitants peacefully. During this time, Palestinians did not denounce our struggle as South Africans. Instead, they raised their voices in solidarity while our parents, our grandparents, our uncles, our aunts lived in fearful hope of a new democratic dispensation. And as we gather here, we should not decry the push of the Zionist movement to displace, displace Palestinians. In fact, if you feel a little uneasy about decrying what is currently happening in Palestine, those in Washington, D.C., some politicians there, according to the Middle East Eye, have condemned the campaign to evict Palestinians from Jerusalem, defying the Washington norm of unprecedented and unconditional support for Israel. And so this evening, I'd like to challenge the leadership of South Africa to lead this international campaign as survivors of the apartheid regime. And I challenge you, in your personal capacity, to do the same without fear and without apology. My message this evening is simple. Don't make oppression easy. And don't allow them to scare us. And empower yourself with credible information. And not because of my own biases, but tune into Radio 786 for facts of the matter as a matter of fact. The intimidation tactics we have seen in the last 24 hours is a push by soldiers from the settlers community. They are mostly members of the Knesset, the Israeli parliament. And the goal there is very simple, as graphic as the videos and images you may have seen are. It's to change the constituency ahead of Israeli elections. 
quite pathetic in my view. We know too well that our freedom is incomplete without the freedom of Palestinians. And that's just not my view, but that is the view of the late Nelson Mandela. And if it was wrong for South Africa, if apartheid was wrong for South Africa, it is equally wrong for Palestine. Since 1799, when Napoleon offered Palestine as a homeland for Jews, it was love, mercy, and lots of olives that met victims of the Holocaust. We know well that the establishment of Rishon Lezion in 1882 gave the confidence to undermine the mercy of Palestinians from within. We know the notion of Zionism was first coined in 1885, and we further know that Zionism does not mean Judaism. And in closing, I'd like to share some facts of history because I believe that if you know your history, it allows you to understand your present. And to understand your present means that you can be proactively involved in shaping your future. So between 1799 and 1946, the British mandate from 1917 to 1948 laid the groundwork for the Jewish state in Palestine. Between 1947 and 1949, over 80% of Palestinians in what became Israel were expelled and approximately 80% of them, were, their land was seized by Zionists. Between 1950 and 1967, after tumultuous events of 1948, as cited by Brother Hassan, 150,000 Palestinians remained in Israel and were eventually granted citizenship. However, they were subjected to military rule until 1966. After the conquest of the West Bank and Gaza Strip, in 1967, Israel began its military control of the Palestinians living in the occupied Palestine territory. Between 1968 and 1992, following Israel's occupation of the rest of historic Palestine, it began building settlements as we know it today, in the West Bank, in the Gaza Strip. And in these colonies, Jewish settlers are allowed to carry armed weapons under the protection of the Israeli Defense Force. And in 1987, after 20 years, after 20 years of brutal military occupation, the first Intifada began and in the occupied Palestinian territory. And between 1993 and 2014, the secret negotiations between the PLO and Israel that concluded in 1993 handed a new chapter of modern Palestine history. For some, the Oslo Accords raised new hopes of peace, but for others, it destroyed that dream entirely. And so I'd like us to remember the pains of Yesteryear, it's not that long ago, but it wasn't that long ago in this country. The brutality imposed upon people of color and so-called white people who identified the brutality for what it is was criminalized. But it was the voices of youth, Palestinian youth, that placed pressure on the international community when the media wasn't allowed to broadcast the, the resistance of young people in South Africa is what the world saw. And in my view, with the utmost respect, it would be nothing short of shameless for us to stand by in silence, not updating our Facebook statuses, our Twitter accounts, our Instagram, our WhatsApp, our all the other social media platforms with the statistics of the day. And in closing, to know your history allows you to understand your present. And to understand your present means that you can proactively shape your future. May we be part of shaping a future of peace. May we be part of shaping a future of love. And may we eat many, many ethical olives from Palestine, inshallah. So I bid you assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And remember to hold steadfast into the rope of Allah because that's the rope that unites us and that's the rope that no amount of pressure can cut.
शुक्राना